Nigeria currently works a fiscal tightrope ahead of the uh, major change in administration uh, in uh, next year, 2023. The country's key economic indicators are getting worse by the day as the Buhari administration gets close to the end, uh, from inflation to debt, ex the debt to the exchange rate to fiscal balance, foreign direct investment. The numbers are... Well, they're like the exchange today. They're bearish. Uh, joining me now for a rubdown of the country's economy is Tokpai Fashua. He's the CEO at Global Analytics Consulting. Uh, he's uh, an economist and a presidential candidate from the 2019 elections under the umbrella of the Abundant Nigeria Renewal Party. Good evening to you, Tokpai. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. So, I mean, let's begin. One year into the end Thanks of the current administration, what are the key economic variables? variables that indicate progress or otherwise in your view? Right. Um, you know, one will struggle hard to, uh, to find, um, you know, a sunny side to it all, but at least one should try. So the administration will talk about progress in terms of maybe some infrastructure. We saw what they did on the trains before it ran into a hitch, though it's still working in some parts of Nigeria. Uh, they said they've done quite a few roads, but the problem is that uh, we can't even get on those roads these days because of uh, insecurity. Um, so they've pride, they pride themselves on some of those things. But when you look at the downside, there seems so much to, look, uh, to, to point to. And I think you mentioned a few of them uh, just now. You know, I mean, talking about low foreign direct investment, talking about the security uh, situation, which seems intractable. You know, talking about the, the, the Naira rate alone. I mean, these are very momentous issues. Uh, the fact that the Met the Naira at 199 today is doing about 450 or thereabout officially and 670 on the streets. Uh, those are damning. Uh, and of course, inflation is again inching up. We now have a five year high and with promises that it's going to go even up further. So, um, you know, we try to stay very positive in these times, but it's hard. I, I tell you, it's really hard. All right. And um, do you think Nigeria faces a scenario of an economic meltdown? How and when is this likely to happen if we're talking doomsday here? <laughs> well, I hope, I hope not, even though I think I pushed out an article on that a couple of days back. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot points to that. The last briefing by the Minister of Finance uh, said that uh, now, uh, for the first time, we, 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 we pay, we used 1.94 trillion in the quarter, in the past quarter, uh, to service debt, and we only made uh, 1.63 uh, trillion. That's a, a negative of 300 billion in terms of a shortfall. And, you know, and, and when you look at that scenario, and, and, and remember, in my view, I believe that when we talk about debt servicing, we're only talking about paying some interest here and there. Many of the loans that were contracted in this administration uh, have a fairly long tenure and uh, some moratorium period before you start to pay. Uh, so what happens when the principal heats up? Uh, I know that they intend to reschedule and all of that, you know, but I mean, uh, why did he get to this point? Now, if the, center, if the federal government is talking about uh, paying so much in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, debt servicing and having that much shortfall, you begin to think about, are we in a fiscal cliff? And then you look at the fact that, I mean, the NMPC just uh, became a limited liability company, meaning that all of that expectation of contribution every month is gone. As a limited liability company, the best you can expect from them is some dividend at the end of the year if they make profit and some taxes at the end of the year if they make profit. So, I mean, that's as well as saying, as good as saying, you forget that department, forget the petroleum sector. Uh, as far as the contribution to the economy, I'm sure a few people will raise issues uh, very shortly. Maybe the states, the local government, the oil producing areas, uh, perhaps haven't known what hit them, you know, with, with that action. And, and of course, it was just a scenario whereby there was no other option but to go in that direction. So, is there going to be a, are we already in a fiscal cliff? Are we tipping at the edge of a fiscal cliff? It looks uh, something like that. It, now, the, the fiscal authorities, the Ministry of Finance, have always complained about uh, that we have a revenue problem, even though we have more than a revenue problem. We are, we've been always telling them we have a revenue problem, we have a debt problem, we have an expenditure problem. Um, how was it that when the going was good, quote unquote, and I, I, I mean, the, the, the going wasn't really good, but when there was some semblance of liquidity, we went to town. 
okay, in government circle and beyond. We went to town purchasing and buying and paying ourselves any way we wanted, you know, without thinking forward. It's, it's really unfortunate. So we hope we don't get to that point, and we're hoping that we don't take one or two wrong decisions that will set us on an inflation spiral. We're already in a stagflation, a stagnant economy, um, and, and inflation. We hope we don't go into hyperinflation, where, you know, people start to adjust prices on a daily basis. We hope the Naira doesn't take a tumble you know, in, in a way that will be precipitous. And the problem is that when things like that happen and they're not well controlled, they feed themselves such that you see a, a race to the bottom, a scenario where, um, you know, the, the loss of confidence. And when, when people lose confidence, for example, in their currency and what have you, uh, that's what you, I mean, it feeds itself. It's a race to the bottom. You know, I mean, uh, the, the, the Monetary Policy Committee of the, of the, under the auspices of the Standard Bank have met, and I think in the last two meetings, they've hiked rate by about 2.5 percent, 250 basis points. You know, what that means when you increase rates, uh, you know, a policy rate, you're also telling the banks to increase their lending rate, and they're quick on the, their finger is quick on the trigger. And when they do that, that slows down the economy. That slows down. So the 3.11 percent growth we had in the last quarter may not be expected for this coming quarter. So we're likely going to see uh, a scenario where growth slows down, and I think we can't afford that, where it's, it's probably going to slow down, and, and inflation is going to inch up further. Because uh, we need to consider why are we having increases in inflation, and what is the cost of our own inflation? It needs to be properly analyzed. It's not only uh, a cost push inflation, it's not only because uh, retailers and manufacturers are adjusting prices because their cost of raw materials have gone up or their cost of purchases. It's also partly because of what's, a what's ailing the world right now, the fact that a lot of money was spent uh, it, during the COVID era and post-COVID era, uh, just to get the economy going, and everywhere in the world is seeing this inflation phenomenon. And of course, also, it's also partly because we're still largely an import economy, and as much as we have our local inflation, we're also importing more inflation from abroad, from the goods and services that we buy from abroad. Mm. Thank you so much for that. Very, very uh, in-depth uh, breakdown there. Um, very quickly, and we'll continue this after the break, but Morocco, France's number one destination for foreign direct investment, according to a new report. Why, in your view, very quickly, Nigeria's FDI has hit rock bottom in seven years, and what's, what's the way out? Well, I mean, well, first of all, capital is a coward. If, if you know, there's a, there's a local saying like that. I mean, even our olden days people know that, that capital money will only go to where it's welcome. Um, if people have to invest in your country, but are they afraid of coming into your country, you've got a problem. Uh, and of course, here, the desirable thing is to get foreign direct investment, not even foreign portfolio investment, uh, which is called hot money. But we see ourselves not having got much in terms of FDI. We begin, begin to chase FPIs, uh, portfolio investment, let people just come and bring money, let them put some money in our bond market or in our stock market anywhere, you know, just invest in Nigeria. But of course, the security situation is a problem. And of course, inflation has always been in double digits here. Um, anyone investing in this country, will, even uh, if you were F FPI, portfolio investor, you'll be benchmarking against the yearly inflation. If you're not making yields that outstrip the inflation, you're just uh, coming for a ride, you know, and that's it. So uh, it's no wonder. I mean, Morocco is a lot more strategic. I mean, they're not as large as Nigeria, but they've made a ve some very good strides, uh, established one of the best uh, ports in in Africa uh, and all of that, and, and, and they're still a tourist country, so they're getting some non-debt dollars coming into that country. And not only Morocco, same for Egypt, same for Algeria, you know, Kenya is even inching up now, uh, not to talk of South Africa and co. you know, so uh, it's, it's, it's a good time. Um, as much as uh, the times are scary for Nigeria, I also believe that um, it's a good time for us to assess the opportunities. Uh, like they say, never waste a crisis. One of the biggest issues we've had in Nigeria is we keep wasting crisis upon crisis. Mm. Now we're going to have, probably have another one. Mind you, the fact that that uh, the world is actually looking and, you know, very edgy towards, um, you know, maybe another global recession, wow. Uh, wow. you know, around the corner. So if another one comes in, what do we do? Are we pursuing?
positioning. Uh, honestly speaking, I don't see a lot of serious economic um, deliberation and, and, and brainstorming mm. going on in government. Unfortunately, we haven't seen that for a while. All right, let's continue the conversation after the break. We're talking with uh, Tokwe Fasoa. Do stay tuned. It's the Arise Exchange right here on Arise News. Welcome back to the Arise Exchange uh, right here on Arise News. We continue the conversation, getting the conversation going on Nigeria's delicate state of fiscal affairs with economist and CEO at Global Analytics Consulting, Tokwe Fasua. And thanks for sticking with us, Tokwe. So uh, how delicate, as we continue the conversation in Nigeria now, how delicate is the country's fiscal balance right now? What does that mean for the uh, incoming administration next year? Well, I, I, I hate to say that whoever is coming to take over this economy is um, almost going to be inheriting a poison chalice, you know, a dead fish, and like my people say, Okuakparo. Um, essentially, you know, I mean, the numbers are out there. Even the people running the economy are having to acknowledge how precarious the situation is. I mean, I mean, we, we've been budgeting for the last maybe eight years. And, uh, you know, we like to con compare our deficits to the GDP, which is always very deceptive. But we've been doing 40%, 45% deficit uh, of the budget. You know, I mean, uh, a scenario where you budget 10, 10, 10 trillion and you intend to borrow sometimes 50% 50, 50 of that uh, because you can't make enough revenue uh, to even cover your position, I think it's, 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 it's absurd and preposterous. Uh, you know, and of course, we also like to compare our debts in general to GDP instead of looking at, look at what has come up with, uh, even the IMF says that at some point we will need more than 100 percent. And of course, it has happened already. Uh, so it's, it's, it's terrible. I mean, where do you start? Um, how do you how do you lock down expenditure, for example, you know, uh, without actually hurting the people? Uh, how do, what do you do? How do you how do you rationalize maybe staff when they need to be rationalized without people complaining loud about you have brought misery to them? How do you increase call it taxation, rates, duties, levies, fines, and so on, without you know, being called a, a wicked government coming in. Because these are all the things. For some reason, the fiscal authorities were politically emasculated this time around, and they could not do what they needed to do. Uh, you know. And of course, the debts are drying up. Uh, very scarily, um, you know, that at some point we had this very nice dalliance with China, and they came and financed quite a few things here, uh, our airports, the rail lines and so on. But even seems like uh, China, of course, has its own problems to deal with. And of course, it may also have got tired with Nigeria. So, I mean, we, we seem not to be picking up uh, the tab where we need to and showing the world that we're serious. So when you look at our fiscal position, it's not looking good at all. And of course, we fired all our monetary policy bullets as well, you know, as much as we could. All that tweaking of interest rates and, 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 and you know, uh, CRR, liquidity ratio, and what have you, all of that has been done to the point that the central bank then moved into the fiscal territory. And of course, this is a, a global phenomenon that for economies that are ailing, the central banks tend to uh, do a little bit more than, mm. you know, just sit on monetary policy. What's the point yep. of ver having very nice interest rates and very nice inflation when the hordes of people are on the streets unemployed and the economy is tanking? Mm. But, I mean, we can't continue this way. That's the point. Uh, are you hearing or seeing enough evidence that the current political candidates for running for, for leadership for president really understand are prepared and are ready for what lies ahead uh, on the socio-economic front. Right. Um, there's a temptation to stick to the, the well, what we call the three major guys, you know, but I think we should also give opportunity to some of the smaller guys, uh, like the guy in SDP, the guy in ADC. We have a few younger guys um, that are also, but we haven't heard much from most of these guys. You know, including the three major, well, we don't want to be campaigning for them here. You know, uh, someone like Peter B has some grasp of the expenditure side and he keeps talking what needs to be said in terms of cutting the expenditure. But what we also need to be hearing is how do we grow a bigger pie? How do we grow this economy? What's the vision for a greater economy? Okay. What I've heard from uh, Alaji Atiku so far is, is coming and he's talking of market forces. But when I look at our demographics and how many people are poor, uh, you know, I do not think that we can throw all of those guys under the market forces boss. 
Uh, from Ashwaju Tinubu, we haven't heard much directly, but a few documents are in the space, uh, which says that it's somewhere on the center left, you know. Uh, of course, some of those ideas also need tweaking. We're hoping that maybe they don't want to talk much until, uh, you know, on the, pop on the campaign start proper, but some of them are already starting to give interviews, which is great. So we want to be able to hear from all of these guys, including some of the ones that may not have enough money or clout to be in everybody's faces or may not have been around for mm. long or may not even have been in public office. Wherever yeah. we can see uh, someone who has ideas to save us, uh, the better for us. And I'm hoping that whichever next government is coming will understand that it needs to be a government of national unity. Mm. You don't have to care if you see the brightest guy from some opposition party, pick him is going to be useful. For right. me, for example, Peter Obi needs to be in that government that's coming, whether he wins or not. I'm not sure if he's able to get the, the presidency at first go. Great for him. But those ideas he's talking about, I mean, they left it too late. Gotcha. Nobody needs gotcha. to be told that we need to be frugal in this country and all of that. Because again, where are we getting the money for? The world is watching us mm. and wondering why we're actually uh, messing up our country. So we hope to hear a lot more from all of these guys going forward. All right. And after this optimistic note to end the conversation, Tokwe Faswa, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate uh, your insights tonight.